we're gonna go ahead and tape and seal up this box. Now, whenever I use Wagos, I tape them just to be safe. It's really hard to duplicate. A lot of people have been asking me, but I've had these weird instances where they've popped open. So I always just like to put tape on them just to be safe. And it's usually when you're pushing them into a weird place, into a tiny box, and I've seen them pop the, the, the handles. I realize that it may not be actually releasing the lever. Oh, check that out. Look at, always gotta inspect. Hold on. Look at, there's a flyaway wire coming down. That would have been a short. Always inspect and pay attention to what you're doing. So somehow I got a flyaway coming out of that guy. And that would have been a problem. But anyways, I'm gonna tape them up and get that sealed up previously on HVACR videos. Happy Sunday night. It is, uh, I don't know, seven o'clock, five o'clock, somewhere in there. I lost track of time. We got an exhaust fan not working. It's raining outside. So they say it's pouring water in the building. It's not pouring, it's dripping down into the exhaust ducts, but this whole fan is trashed. Okay, I mean, <laughs> everything's busted on it. Um, that looks not good. Conduit's busted. Look at this, follow the conduit down. <laughs> That's broken. It's just raining inside of it. All right, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know? I can see uh, copper wires right there where it's rubbed out. So yeah, I bet you they single phase the motor. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Currently waiting for management to get here. We got three exhaust fans going up, three exhaust fans coming down. The crane is uh, ready for them, and we're all just waiting for management. This is the one that I had to uh, fix while it was raining in the middle of the night. We're changing this fan, this fan, and that fan right there. So we're just getting them unhooked. Currently uh, bringing up the fans. Uh, the crane showed up an hour early, so <laughs> wasn't supposed to show up till 8 at 7 a.m., so we're just working with it. We've got, uh, this one has an older style super hinge. We are gonna utilize that again on the new fan, so we're taking that off. And we're currently pulling up one of the old fans. We've got two new ones already up here. So normally we do this in a perfect order where one up, one down, one up, one down. But because um, he was early and we're still unhooking, we're having to do it this way. So it's all good. And I'm not bitching that he was early. That's a good thing that he was early. And I usually don't do this, but uh, Capistrano cranes, if you guys are here in SoCal, they're legit. 100%. Always early. Um, they always have the right equipment, at least my experience with them. So if you're working in South Orange County or Orange County in general, I'd uh, highly suggest Capistrano Crane if you guys are local. They're good guys. Um, so we got one more going down, and then we're done. Then we'll start hooking up. Um, now we have an order that we have to do this because they need this fan to cook. They need this fan next. And then this fan over here is not a, an emergency. So we're going to make sure that we get these two done first and then the other one that way they can start cooking starting with this one what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and grab the conduit uh, we are going to have to reuse that wire because we can't really get to the inside and we're going to have to reuse that fitting don't really like the way it should have been a box right there and then you could have gone off in the box but we're replacing that section of conduit that went to a box and then we'll uh, do new conduit up to the fan and we have to use bushings because these always come with three quarter bo um, boxes and we use half inch conduit for this. So we're gonna do a three quarter to a half inch bushing on that. Got them sitting right on top of that AC right there. Yeah. 
ahead and pull it back as far as it'll go. Back as far as it'll go. Push it forward. Like that. I need to know this before I can uh, pull the wire in it to make sure this conduit wants it. So these bushings right here have threads on the inside and threads on the outside. They go right in and they make it adapt to a half inch box. What is it that they're doing here? Why? The last one did this too. What the heck is happening? It's sitting right there. Yeah. So this side is hitting right here. This side has three. This side has three, but it's nowhere near here. This one's in the top. That one's in the top. That one's in the middle. Okay, go ahead and set it down. Let's go ahead and shim out this side. Wait, one more. One washer. Right now? Yeah. It rubs on it a little bit. Yeah, that's it, fine. But, but it's plenty long. You can put the pin in it if you have to. And that's max. Okay, I like it. Set it down. Okay, I'm working on this. So finalize that. Get that pin mounted. The release safety pin should go right here. Get that mounted okay. so that way they can shove it through. And then. Uh, where do you mount this thing? You mount it because you want it to be, so mount it like right here. Loosen this, right? Or, oh, you know what? No, run it through here. Okay. Run it through there and tighten it. And then that way you can just pop it in there. Okay. So, okay. And then go ahead and run the other one through here too. Yeah. All right, got the conduit ran, the wire pulled. Um, got it connected here. Now these, we have to leave uh non-taped and we don't want to close up this box because we might have to reverse the phase rotation because this is a three-phase fan these ones we're going to go ahead and tape and seal up this box now whenever i use wagos i tape them just to be safe it's really hard to duplicate a lot of people have been asking me but i've had these weird instances where they've popped open so i always just like to put tape on them just to be safe and it's usually when you're pushing them into a weird place into a tiny box and i've seen them pop the 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 handles. I realize that it may not be actually releasing the lever. Oh, check that out. Look at always got to inspect. Hold on. Look at 
there's a flyaway wire coming down that would have been a short always inspect and pay attention to what you're doing so somehow I got a flyaway coming out of that guy and that would have been a problem but anyways I'm gonna tape them up and get that sealed up and then we'll proceed currently putting the hinges on this one then we'll work on doing the electrical on that one too all right this guy's done grease traps are mounted conduits currents good grease traps mounted everything's good got my OSHA approved safety step and uh, this one right here good to go actually worked out kind of nice how we were able to come out the I had dealt boxes with double holes on the side those are kind of nice come around grease trap mounted we are good to go we're gonna give them the keys tell them to keep an eye on it that was a quick one so we had uh, three exhaust fans after I did the first call and it was raining and we came back out and just went ahead and went with the customer and talked to them and let them know that those exhaust fans were all in really bad shape they agreed they wanted to get them changed out. So took us a little bit. We went ahead and went back with the ILG exhaust fans. The cool thing is, is they're American made, made in Florida, I think Jacksonville, Florida. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it doesn't always work that with the way. And I'm not always like 100% everything has to be American made, but when and if it is possible, it's a really good thing. So um, went back with the ILG fans. Now, why didn't I go with Captive Air? Why didn't I go with Green Heck? Um, simply because I prefer to put back what is there as long as it's not just a piece of junk, okay? The ILG fans, they work just fine. They're easy to work on, they last a while. The same thing with Green Heck and Captive Air. I prefer to go back with what's there because it's just easier. It, you know, if I can just go to ILG and say, this is the model number of the fan, boom, it's so easy to replace. Now, yes, you can go to Green Heck. Yes, you can go to Captive Air and they can adapt things and make things work. But if you can go back with the original fan, majority of the time, it's going to be a like for like replacement, super easy, no curb adapters needed. It is what it is, right? So I prefer to try to make it as simple as possible when we're doing these jobs. Now, a couple things. I showed you guys a little bit of the process of wiring the fan up and some of the, you know, attaching the hinges and different things. Obviously, I was there for about four hours that day, uh, you know, between the crane lift and all that different stuff. But I wasn't going to show you guys the whole process, but it takes some time. It's best if you're prepared when you're going into those jobs, knowing what you're going to get involved in. Uh, you know, I already had the conduit, the fittings, all that different stuff. We had picked it up the previous day. So that was convenient to be able to just park myself. Now I did have several technicians there in the morning for the crane lift because that makes things go easier. But then they all got peeled off. One did a compressor change. Actually, it, it was just a chaotic day. We had a compressor go down and then we had another reach in down somewhere else. And then everybody came together at the end of the day to finish help helping one of the techs change the compressor. And it was just a, a normal day at uh, my company. Just chaos as usual right uh but you know i don't know there's something about it i think i'm i'm addicted to it i think i'm drawn to that chaos but regardless really important point when you're putting exhaust fans in you want to try to match the exact speed of the old fan okay we matched the motors and the pulleys were pretty darn close to the old ones but um I always encourage my customers to get the air balance company to come in after us, make sure that they're set up to what they need. Uh, there is ways to make sure, like for instance, if I put the exact same pulleys on that fan and you open the variable motor pulley uh, to the, the same pitch that the other one was at, then theoretically it should be going the same speed. I can't stress this enough. You do not adjust variable pitch motor pulleys. Hold on. These are variable pitch motor pulleys. They are adjustable. They can open and they can close. You do not open and close these pulleys to loosen and tighten a belt, okay? When you open the pulley, the belt is going to sit down further in there and the belt's going to be loose. When you close the pulley, it's going to pull the belt out in the pulley and it's going to tighten the belt. But that is just a byproduct of opening and closing it. That is not how you um, tighten a belt and loosen a belt. This right here changes the speed at which the belt drives the driven pulley, okay? The larger pulley typically. This right here changes the speed. So your motor for the most part is gonna run at a fixed speed unless it's on a variable frequency drive, okay? It's gonna run at a fixed speed. So this one right here, 
was a 1725 RPM motor. It runs at 1725 RPMs, right? Revolutions per minute. So this right here allows us to change the speed and speed it up or slow it down as need be of the driven pulley, okay? So I can't stress it enough. You never adjust these unless you know what you're doing because what you're gonna do is you're gonna put more load uh, speed up the motor or speed up the fan slow down the fan that kind of stuff So it's really important that you understand that you do not adjust these unless you know what you're doing So in that case, uh, I went ahead and matched everything as best as I could with what was Delivered right by the fan company and then I tell them just to go ahead and get the air balance company out Just to be a hundred percent sure that way they can go through everything and dial it all in as they need be now My particular customer doesn't mind doing that I have other customers that will never call an air balance company and I have to do everything myself. So you can get out tachometers, you can check the speed of the driven pulley or driven, you know, blower wheel essentially, right? And you can match it up that way. There's a couple different ways to go about it, but whenever possible, I try to just get the air balance company out. That way they can just make sure everything's where they want it. All right. I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. It's really awesome. Um, love the support. I can't say this enough. The emails, the comments, um, the support by buying merch, which is available on my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, thank you all for all of that, okay? Um, if you are interested in helping to support the channel, obviously hvacrvideos.com is a great way. Merchandise available there. You can support the channel uh, financially through PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. There's a couple different ways right there. Um, really easy way and a cool way to do it is uh well actually the simplest way to do it is simply watch the videos that's it just watch the videos from beginning to end simple as that right um but uh you can also go to truetechtools.com right if you're interested in person purchasing any tools i actually have an affiliate program set up with them if you use my offer code big picture you get an eight percent discount on majority of the items on their website i get a small commission from it it's just a win-win right so anyways it's all good. I really do appreciate you all. Thank you very much, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?